there are some significant developments happening for TVs in the 2022 model year and the LG C2 OLED is one such TV seeing some pretty significant changes. Did you miss me? The C2 now comes with the next-gen OLED EVO panel which greatly reduces the risk of image retention and burning. It also has a brand new redesign for this 2022 model year. There are so many new developments happening in the OLED TV space with the introduction of the QD OLEDs and the LG C series having the EVO panels now. So we're going to find out this year which TV has the best image quality and the best bang for your buck. So we're going to be comparing LG's C2, G2, along with all of the other OLED TVs like the ones from Sony and Samsung. But before we can do any of that, we have to unbox this thing and set it up. So stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. You know me, that guy who makes the videos on home theater and TVs. But today we have the LG C2 OLED TV, which is actually one of the first of its type for sale in the US. So this is one of the first ones you can get in the US and I got it from Value Electronics. Those guys over there are great. I'm, I'm scaring my dog. <laughs> Those guys over there are great. And if you are actually in the market for this TV as well, then I've left links to them in the description. But let's dig in and see what's inside. Cooper is very interested. Part of the stand. Then we have a bag with the manuals and product registration along with an IR extender and cable management clips and some screws for the stand, the new Magic Remote and some batteries. That's really all that's in the top. So now we can take off this top styrofoam. All right, now we need to get this on a flat surface so we can install the stand and we'll use the box that the TV came in with the styrofoam inside to act as a rigid surface so we can install the stand. The stand for the C2 is completely different. It's been entirely redesigned uh, for the C2 versus the previous ones up to the C1. Now, for the stand, it's in two pieces. And this part, this tongue and groove section, lines up with this and just slides in. You can see, slides in based on the grooves. Takes a little force to get it to line up, but what you want to do is line up these screw holes, you can see. So there are two pairs of screws that this uh, is attached with. So one goes here, one pair, and the other two go down here. And these are the ones, thicker screws without the blue tips. They're the ones we want. So first we can And the other pair goes in here. You can see that one pair or one goes here. Screw that part in. And of course the brush metal part of the stand faces forward. Want to put your best foot forward, of course, so it makes sense. We are set. We have the stand assembled. Now we use these four screws to secure it. The stand isn't actually weighted like it has been in the past. It's just for balance, so it just balances the TV upright. The previous stands had about 20 or so pounds in the back portion that was weighted to keep the TV on the stand and from tipping forward, but that's not the case anymore. 
So depending on your living situation, you may want to have the TV secured in some way because it's not as um, secured from the stand as it has been in the past. And done. It gives you the option to set up via either the TV and remote or a mobile device, but we'll be using a TV for this. Yes, let's turn that off and we can select our time zone up front. All right. And then after that, it's the Wi-Fi. Once Wi-Fi is set up, you can then select the term and conditions that you agree to. Fun fact, you can skip this setup process entirely and just go straight to your HDMI sources or your cable source, what have you. And then if you say want to use the app store to download apps, you can do that at that time. But if you say later right here, you can bypass this entire thing but I will just agree to the terms of use and privacy policy for the moment and not everything because um, I just don't like to agree to them commoditizing my TV use, but that's just me. You may feel differently, in which case you may want to just select all those uh, terms and agree to them. So the only things I have connected to the TV at the moment is a Blu-ray player, the Sony X800 Mark II, and the cable box. So, this doesn't actually sh give connected to, okay. So if you hover over the selections, it, it gives you the full text, but it doesn't give it to you by default. So yes, it's a cable box connect it to remote and then you say se you select your and then you select your zip code for program guide information and then whether you have the TVs so I'll tell you right now AI sound pro I like the effect it has it boosts the, the highs and the base but AI picture pro I'm not very fond of it because it essentially just adds sharpening to the picture which I'm not especially fond of so I'll leave AI Sound Pro on, but leave AI Picture on. It just sounds fuller with the AI Sound Pro. Home Auto Launch, so if you want your menu button or menu bar to be launched whenever you turn on the TV, you would enable this, but I find that uh, very annoying, so I will never enable that. Uh, always Ready, so Always Ready. <laughs> has the TV kind of remaining in a soft um, on power state. So it's always available to do things like playing back music through AirPlay or some other music streaming service or uh, playing a wallpaper, displaying a wallpaper or voice recognition. No, that's just, no, not for me. And now we can set up our cable box using the remote so the hdmi 3 the blu-ray player that is controlled via hdmi cc so that doesn't need setting up but the cable box is an older one and i know that the lg tvs just don't have the code for it so i'll bypass this entirely exit but if you did have a setting or a device that you wanted to set up that's the screen that you would use so that you can use your tv remote to control them and if you want to link your lg account with it you can sign in via the lg think app or the web or using the tv remote by uh, inputting your credentials so we'll skip that part because it's not actually necessary and after we do that we are complete 
The LG C2 OLED comes in a bevy of sizes ranging from 42 inches to 83 inches. It has a 4K 120Hz OLED EVO panel and supports Dolby Vision HDR10 and HLG Hybrid Log Gamma HDR standards. It has LG's new Alpha 9 Gen 5 AI processor and has three USB ports and four HDMI 2.1 ports with port number two having the enhanced audio return channel ERC. It has a 2.2 channel 40 watt sound system and supports G-Sync, FreeSync, VRR and ALLM for gaming. It supports Alexa, Google Assistant and Apple HomeKit with AirPlay 2 support. First, now for some first impressions. The C2 is now all new because the entire TV has pretty much seen a redesign and I am really digging the new design language. They have reduced the size of the bezel so the already thin OLED TV bezels are now even thinner which is kind of incredible and the new stand design the old stand design was getting pretty old, uh, the broader stand that they had, even though it was very functional. The new one looks better, but it's not quite as functional as the old one, because the old one with the weighted stand would keep the TV firmly in place and prevent any tipping hazards when that really isn't the case right now. The stand pretty much just balances the TV upright, it doesn't keep it planted. But I know some of you are more concerned with the picture quality and as far as the picture quality goes, there is a noticeable improvement over the previous uh, C-series TV. So the picture actually looks brighter now and the contrast has also improved. So I've been noticing some more details in the shadow areas, but I'm not sure if that's actually true or just my perceptions, but I'll be testing that further with my screen test so we can surely confirm whether the shadow detail, the near black detail has been improved or not on the C2. But I think to better illustrate whatever improvements may have happened over last year's model, a comparison to the C1 is necessary. And that's exactly what I plan to do. So going forward, I'll be comparing the C2 with a bunch of TVs. So I'll be doing a bunch of cross comparisons. So I'll be comparing it with the Samsung QD OLED and the Sony QD OLED whenever I get those in, as well as the QLEDs of 2022. So there'll be a lot of comparisons taking place this year. I didn't get to do as many as I could last year because of time constraints, but I'll be making up for that this year for sure. So if you're interested in any of those comparisons, make sure to subscribe because those videos are to come. But yeah, I have a really positive impression of the C2 OLED so far and I'll be doing a few tests, both the screen test, picture test, as well as the gaming test to see just how well it performs and to see what and where it fits in the market. So stick around for those. Let me know in the comments if you are in the market to buy a new OLED TV and if so, if the C2 or any other TV is on your list. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.